This is Renee from IT Twoggin, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the social share buttons on a Thrive Content Builder landing page. This particular landing page is the Coming Soon page. Now, if you notice, I have a Coming Soon template set up. So what you're going to need, by the way, to follow along with this video is a self-hosted WordPress blog and Thrive Content Builder. In this case, I have a Thrive Content Builder Coming Soon landing page. That is a mouthful. But that's what I have pulled up here. Now, if you notice, there are a few social share buttons, or at least that's what they look like, right? But in reality, there's a lot of things that need to happen. In order for these particular social share buttons to work, you have to select on them and then you choose social options. And the first thing that you need to do is figure, configure your app ID for Facebook. This is honestly a bit of a confusing step, but if you see right here where it says click here to learn how to set up a Facebook app, they have created, Thrive Themes has created a really, really good tutorial on how to do this. So I'm not going to walk through all of the steps just because they already have it, but the step one is to click on the link for the Facebook app ID. You can see over the years I've created a lot of Facebook apps, right? But if you open this up, they're going to walk you step by step on exactly what to do. And these steps are perfect. They work really well. I had to do this myself. I find it personally confusing, so I'm really grateful that they have the steps. And by the way, don't feel bad if you're confused by this, because look how many I have created over the years, and I still have to follow these directions. It is not um, the most user-friendly thing that Facebook has set up. I don't know why they can't make this easier and better, but whatever. This is the way it is. So my recommendation is that you just follow straight through with these instructions right here, okay? Now, once you've done that, you can come back. Twitter's a little bit easier. Um, URL to tweet. You can leave that empty if you want it to be the URL of the page that you're on. If for some reason you want them to tweet a different URL, then you could put that URL in there, which of course is, you know, like ittwogging.com forward slash I, I, blogging. I, I don't know. I can't think of a reason why you would want this to happen, but there may be one that I'm not aware of. So that's something you can think about. You can pre-write the tweet. So like in the case of a coming soon page, I might really want to do that. Um, be excited because a new project is coming your way. Now, clearly you would want to write something that's specific to your um, project, right? So whatever it is. So I'm just, I'm doing a generic video here. So I'm being generic in my language. But if this was for I teach blogging, I would say, hey guys, please sign up for my newsletter because um, iteachblogging.com is coming soon and I want you to know about the launch. So I'd probably say something like that. Here in the VIA, we're going to put I teach blogging or whatever, of course, your um, Twitter handle is. Obviously, don't put I teach blogging because that's not your Twitter handle. And I would have all these weird random tweets, but there you go. That would be weird. So then you have button label and you just leave that as tweet. There's no reason to change that. And then you can config configure your LinkedIn. Same kind of thing. Um, it's pretty basic. Again, fa uh, Facebook is the only really complicated one. If you wanted to add a Pinterest button, you could choose pin here. You would choose your image and then you would put in a description just like you would on um, anything else. So you would want to have an image in your media library that you choose. So that's something to keep in mind. You want to make, by the way, on Pinterest images, you want them to be kind of this shape. You know, you want them to be tall and long. Those are the ones that um, work best. So once you have everything configured, if you wanted to Google Plus, you could do that. And again, all of that set. It won't let me save because I haven't done my app ID. But if I had, everything would work out. So just keep that in mind. The first thing you're probably want to get going to want to do is do your app ID. So just follow the instructions from Thrive Content Builder and you will be set. Now, if you want different looking buttons, you can select inside of here and they have five styles for you to choose from. So style one, style two, style three, style four. Now, keep in mind, if you don't like those, there are some other choices. So over here on the right, you could go to social share buttons. You could click custom design. You could drag that up. I'm just going to put it right there for the sake of this conversation. And 
here they are. Those are different looking ones. Those are the ones that I actually enjoy using. And again, they have five choices. Probably want to center them. And you would go through the exact same steps, making sure you have that Facebook app ID. That is the secret to these share buttons. So once you have a Facebook um, app share ID, I highly recommend that you put that ID number in your Evernote so that you can save it for future reference when you're working on your blog. So I hope that this helps. All you do after you're done is hit the save button and everything will be ready to go and life will be good. All right, so that's how you do the Facebook share buttons and social media share buttons on your Thrive Content Builder coming soon page. Mm -hmm.